Okay, hi. We're going to start our first recorded lectures for the um, online course in ergodic theory. And we start with a few, reviewing a few terms that we discussed last time. Uh, we are dealing with XD, which is a compact metric space, which we fix once and for all. As always, BX is this Borel sigma algebra of X, the smallest sigma algebra that contains all the open balls or all the open sets. The set of all probability measures on BX is denoted MX. And of course, we know that this set is not empty. We don't know much about its structure beyond that. The measures of MX we saw last time are completely determined by their values on continuous functions. So we do not need to consider all possible measurable functions, but only the continuous ones. And we give the space of continuous functions a name. We call it CX. These are continuous functions with values in R. And it has the norm, the soup norm, as it always does. Note that we know that CX is second countable because XD is a compact metric space. The dual space to CX, we denoted that by CX star, is simply the space of all bounded linear functionals on CX. The risk representation theorem, which we now explain, allows us to understand what all the measures, the probability measures in MX are. But we begin with two definitions. A functional J in CX is called positive if it takes a non-negative value on every non-negative function. And it's said to be normalized if the value that it takes on the constant function 1 is 1. And with that, we can now uh, state the risk representation theorems we have a map that goes from the probability measures to the functionals which for every probability measure simply assigns the values of the integrals given by that measure this is easy to see that it's a that j mu defined this way is a uh, bounded linear functional of course it is normalized because the function one the integral of the function 1 is just the measure of the space, which is 1. And of course, it is positive because the integral of a positive function, if you recall the definition of the integral, supremum of all kinds of simple functions and whatnot, clearly the integral of a positive function is not ever negative. Or the integral of a non-negative non function, I should say. Well, this association that takes a measure mu and associate to it the uh, normalized positive functional j sum u is a bijection from mx to the set of all, all positive normalized functionals in cx star. And the advantage that we have by having such a bijection is that cx star has more structure than we have in cx. And in fact, it has a topology, which we call the weak star topology, which we now will discuss a little bit. The weak star topology is defined to be the coarsest topology where all the functions from c star to r given by take a functional and evaluate it on the function excuse me let me start this again if we start with a function f in cx it defines a functional on cx star simply by evaluating where j goes this is of course a standard thing and it says that cx embed in the double dual of itself the weak star topology on CX star is the absolutely coarsest topology, which makes every one of these maps continuous. And because by what we discussed on the previous slide, we know that the set of all probability measures embed in CX star, we now get that in particular, the function from the probability measures into R given by evaluating the integral of a given continuous function this is continuous on the induced topology on MX as a subset of, or subspace rather, of CX star. Okay, if you have never seen this before, there's a lot to digest on this one little slide. And I definitely recommend that you go to your favorite analysis textbook. This is standard and it's covered more or less everywhere. And look at what we're talking about here. Let's for a moment just discuss the topology. We have a function between two sets, let's call them A and B. We want to put an initial topology. Initial is where the function initiates from. That would be A. We want to put a topology on A 
so the function is continuous. So of course I'm now assuming secretly that B already has a topology. Well, if you say every set in A is open, then of course the condition for continuity, preimage of open sets in B is open in A. That condition holds for free. But you will have too many open sets and it will be impossible to get things to converge in A. So we would like to be a little bit more refined. We are looking for the absolute coarsest topology on A. Coarsest topology means as few open sets as possible so that the function that we have from A to B is still continuous. That would be the weak topology on A. And of course, you don't have to apply to a single function. That could be a whole family of function of any cardinality from A into B. And in fact, there could be functions from A into different spaces, B1, B2, however you want to list them. We would want a topology on A, which has as few open sets as possible, as coarse as possible, so that all these functions are continuous simultaneously. And this is a setup that we have here. We have a single set, CX star, and we have a whole bunch of functions from CX star into topological spaces. In fact, the topological spaces that we map into are all the same space R. A lot of functions from CX star into R, in fact, one for every function F in CX. And we're looking for a topology on CX star as coarse as possible with as few open sets as possible that makes all these continue simultaneously. There's a dual concept, which is called the terminal topology, which is perhaps a bit more familiar. If the set A already has a topology on it, I will now look for a topology on B that makes the function from A to B continuous. And again, I can be ridiculous about it and say, let's say that only all of B and the empty set are open and nothing else is open. Then of course, any function whatsoever into B is automatically continuous. So when we look for a terminal topology, the function from A to B terminates in B, so it's called a terminal topology. We are looking for the biggest possible topology, as many open sets as possible, so that the function from A to B is still continuous. And the same story from before, you can have a lot of functions and they can originate from different spaces. It doesn't have to be a single space A. All ending or terminating in B, and we will look for the terminal topology in B. There is one place where all of us have already seen a terminal topology. If we have a topological space A, and the topological space A, we have some equivalence relation, then we can look at the equivalence classes and we get the set of equivalence classes. We want a topology on the equivalence classes that will make the projection map continuous. And we want the topology to make sense. In other words, not just have nothing open. The definition of the quotient topology is exactly as a terminal topology. A set in the quotient set, a set is open if and only if its preimage is open before you take the quotient. So that is exactly the biggest possible topology that makes the quotient map still continuous. So this is the way we apply it here and in at first glance, maybe we should have talked about weak rather than weak star topology. Why are we talking about weak star? Because we are looking at CX star. Uh, the weak topology, you can read about it if you have a vector space and you have a bunch of functionals that you choose on that vector space. It doesn't have to be all of them. Then you want to put a topology on the vector space so that all these functionals are continuous. We are applying this where our vector space is CX star and the functionals are not all of CX double star, but only one that are given by evaluation on a function F from CX. OK, so this was a little bit of a digression about what all this stuff is supposed to be. And now we'll give a slightly more uh, concrete description of the uh, weak star topology. First, we can have an explicit basis for weak star topology. And this is what the basis elements are. Fix one measure mu in MX. I should say 
this is the weak star topology on the subspace MX and not all CX star. Fix one mu. And in a sense, I guess we can say that this is going to be a neighborhood of mu. For some counting number n, choose function f1 through fn. The slide says fi through fn, but it should be f1. And for some epsilon positive, now look at all probability measure mu prime in mx, which has the property that for every i, the total integral of fi d mu and the total integral of fi d mu prime differ by less than epsilon. Then this set is open in mx, and the collection of all these sets for every possible mu, for every possible n, for every f1 through fn, and for every epsilon, all these things taken together, that forms a basis for the weak star topology. Recall that cx, because x is a compact metric space, cx is second countable. So let us fix some particular uh, dense sequence. We can call them fi, not to be confused with the fi from the previous uh, point. Um, and with that, we can turn mx, in fact, into a metric space. So the metric that induces the same topology as the topology that we've been discussing so far is given uh, in the next slide. You sum up the difference in the integral between fi d mu 1 and fi d mu 2 and divide it by something big enough that will ensure that you have convergence. You can choose functions fi with norm ridiculously big and that will cause me a problem and you're summing an infinite set and that will cause me a problem. So just divide by the norm and 2 to the i to avoid to ensure that there is some decent convergence there and define this to be the distance between the probability measure mu 1 and mu 2. So this is kind of useful because if you know what the open sets are and better still, you know what the metric is, you can understand pretty well what convergence means. Some more properties of the weak star topology. There is an embedding of the space X itself into MX. And the embedding is given simply by associating with a point X, the probability measure delta X, which is the atomic measure at X. So a measure of a set will be either 0 or 1. It is 1 when x is in the set and 0 otherwise. This is a continuous embedding if we're using the C star, the weak star topology on Cx star. Another useful property is about convergence of measures. So suppose that mi is a sequence of measures and, excuse me, mu i is a sequence of measure, measures and mu is another measure. Then the following are equivalent. The first uh, condition is that mu i converges to mu. Now we have a topology on CX star. Mx lives inside CX star, which gives us a topology on Mx. So we can ask if things converge or not. This is the first con condition. The second condition is that the integral of fd mu i converges to the integral of fd mu for any continuous function f. The next condition is that if you take a closed set, then the limb soup on the mu i measures of the closed set C is less than or equal to the limb, uh, excuse me, the measure mu of C. And the final condition is very similar to the one on the closed sets. You know, if you move to co complements, you'll have open sets. So for every open set, if we compare the measures that mu i give us with that open set to the measure uh, that mu has, then you have a similar thing that the lim inf of the mu i measure of u is greater than or equal to the measure of u. Um, I was not planning to put a proof of these facts on uh, during the recorded lecture. They all exist in uh, most of them, not all of them actually. Most of them are covered in Peter Walters's book uh, but for now, let's just leave it as that. We'll certainly not prove the next one anyway. The final condition that we want to discuss about the weak star topology is the banach alaglu theorem, which says that the closed unit ball in the weak star topology is compact. It's obvious this is the kind of thing that we want because 
compact things allow us to convert uh, to discuss convergence and in fact if we apply this to mx itself mx sits inside of cx star but it sits in cx star as a pretty small set it's only the normalized positive functionals and the theorem that we will be using next lecture which i'm hoping to complete tomorrow is that if you look at a dx xd a compact metric space and you look at mx the set of all probability measures on xd equipped with a weak star topology then the entire space mx is compact this will be the starting point for the next lecture if you have any questions uh, please shoot me an email and i will try to respond as quickly as i can and i hope to see you all tomorrow i don't know it doesn't make sense to say see you all tomorrow does it um i hope to have another recording available tomorrow that's it for now goodbye <laughs>